Hi, everybody. This is one of our favorite kinds of shows for the Messages of Hope podcast. When I get my two wonderful friends and assistants, Bev and Lynette, to come on the air with me and ask questions that all of you have submitted. We never know which way this is going to go. And because I don't have all the answers, but I know that those in spirit have most of them, we're going to call on them to answer these questions for you. So I know you'll love the show. Let me bring in the girls. Hello, Bev and Lunette. Hi. Hello. You, you two are celebrities in your own right. I mean, when we were on the Alaska cruise together, people were like, you're Bev, you're Lynette. Well, I remember the first time I yeah. met Bev and you were there, Suzanne. I'd seen you once before in person, but I had never seen Bev in person. And Brenda made a beeline for you. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's Bev Garland. Like it was a movie star because she felt that way. <laughs> And I was saying, it's Brenette, Brenda and Lynette. Yay. Well, those of you who don't know Brenda, Brenda is my mediumship guy, but she started off as my human and physical form friend. And uh, so I forgot to call on Brenda, but I'm sure she's around. So why don't we just jump right in? Let me just let everybody know that all of these questions have been submitted by members of our Messages of Hope community. And you can submit questions also in the comments section. If we don't get to them today, we will get to them at a future time. I know that the girls have dozens of them and we're just going to flow with it. So questions about the afterlife, philosophy, life here in physical form from the spirit world's view. Take it away, Bev, with the first question. Okay, I have one from Denise. Um, she says, it has become very popular for people to search their ancestry through DNA. If we reincarnate and have several lives, what purpose does this serve in the grand scheme of things? <laughs> the, the word that Spirit put in my mind right away was curiosity, yeah. right? We, okay, so let me ask Spirit... Well, the guides are making it clear that looking into our past lives is certainly helpful for knowing why we might have certain tendencies or why we feel certain way towards people that we just can't explain. But they always want us to focus on this life. So certainly that's why we look into our DNA for our heritage here. But that's what the interesting thing is when you, when you come to know that you're not only human, you realize that you and the people in your family here may very well be part of your soul family. So there's just a little bit of an overlap there. Did that answer the question? Oh, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Miss Lynette. Oh, I can't hear you. No, I think you might be muted. Yes, I was muted. This one is interesting to me because I once saw somebody's aura shooting out behind them on a street and it was yellow, bright, bright yellow. So it's, it's curious what those colors mean. The question is, does our aura reflect our soul's development or evolution, or is it more an indicator of where we are on any given day in the human realm and how the energy is being felt and expressed? Well, I'm going to have to ask the team that. Oh, the guys say there is an overall aura that, oh, it has its own vibration. They're showing me, let me make myself full screen so you can see my hand. They're going like this, that, that if you could see yourself, spirit says, as we see you, it is, it is very telling the state of your entire energy field, but indeed the colors within that relate to each of the energy centers do change moment by moment, day to day, based on your health, based on your moods. But understand that your everyday thoughts add up to create what I in my human form call your ringtone. Everybody has a specific vibration, a specific frequency that's identifiable as you. And that's what a medium and a psychic tunes into your ringtone. Hmm. So I just changed your ringtone on my phone this morning. Can we change our ringtones through lifetime? <laughs> oh, I got to talk to you later and see why you did that and what you chose for me. <laughs> Hopefully not that screeching sound on some movie I watched. Once. Oh, that's my mother-in-law. <laughs> Can we change our ringtones in our lifetime? Well, as guides are saying right now, that's the goal. 
we come in already as beautiful shining lights. We tend to forget that and the light may dim a bit, but our goal is to go back shining even more brightly than we came here to, to bring more love into this world. And as we do that, our tone brightens. But I don't want people to feel this terrible responsibility if you're going through hard times. Many of you tune into this program because you're in grief over a loved one who has passed to the other side. And I want to tell you that we're talking overall ringtone and that the ups and downs of life are absolutely part of your soul's growth and actually help you to evolve more by in the way in which you handle your challenges. Do you go inside or you, do you and, and withdraw or do you go within and tap in to higher consciousness and all the help that's available from your guides, your loved ones across the veil, from the angels? And so don't be hard on yourself if your light dims for a while, but know that the goal is to overall turn it up more brightly. Wow. Yay. All right, Bev. Ready. A uh, question from Jacqueline. Uh, how do I distinguish between my intuition versus my own fears of what may happen in future moments? Intuition is that still small voice that, that is often so subtle that we can overlook it, whereas fear is shouting at you and trying to get your attention and distract you. I think today's Daily Way message was about distractions from the outer world. Intuition comes with an open feeling that you that doesn't knock you off balance. You feel calm, at ease, and there's a knowing this is truth, whereas fear always is accompanied by a physical constriction and even your mind feels restricted. So fear has a voice of its own very clearly. And those moments when you listen to your intuition and follow it, remember what that feels like. We all sure know what fear feels like. Your intuition is the voice of the soul. And it's also how your higher helpers speak to you. So it really is important to get to know that difference. Okay, Lynette. Okay. In cases where someone is kept alive on a ventilator for two years and never regains consciousness, does the, sto does the soul stay in the body the whole time until the body actually dies? Oh, what a great question. And I know that Bev and Lynette have been with me so long on this journey that I know they know the answer to these questions as we're asking them. But even if I think I know, I'm going to check with Sanaya, my guides. <laughs> and they say, what do you think? Of course, it's uh, the soul. As long as the body is breathing, it is being breathed by the soul, which is being kept in existence and awareness by source. So when the soul finally departs the body, we call that physical death. But the soul is always part of the body, no matter whether it, you are physically aware of your surroundings. But what's really important to know is just like those who have dementia or who are nonverbal, their souls are already communicating with non-physical beings. They're already playing on the other side of the veil. So... Uh, Lynette, what's the name of that video you're always referring people to that I did that that tells oh. people not to believe this the body is suffering? That is so powerful. It's called when the soul, when the body dies, does the soul suffer? When the body dies, does the soul suffer? It's a video on my YouTube channel about a lesson from a man across the veil that was with irrefutable evidence that he was just doing fine, even though it looked like his body was suffering. Very comforting. So everybody enjoying these questions or just one after another? They're really good right off the bat. Some really new ones. If yeah. you like this program, we're really trying a new Messages of Hope pro, uh, channel on YouTube with the longer programs. And we're going to ask you to hit that subscribe button right now so that you don't miss a future episode. All right. Even if you're already subscribed to the Suzanne Giesman channel, this is the Messages of Hope show channel. So please hit subscribe and help us get the word out to more people. All right, Bev, let's move on with the questions. Okay, let's see. One from Karen. Um, when someone dies unexpectedly and very quickly, 
Is their soul confused or, or does it feel lost? Mm. Mm. This is an interesting it's question an interesting because question. by the time that I speak to souls, when I do a reading as a medium, they're very sure of where they are and what they're doing across the veil. So I don't have the personal experience of talking to souls in that condition. However, we'll ask the guides and they say that you would understand this as confusion, but do not worry about them. For all souls who cross the veil are surrounded by love and have loving escorts with them, whether or not they choose to listen to the advice that is being put into their awareness where they no longer have physical ears, is the same as whether you in human form make the choice to listen to our advice when we talk through your intuition. How interesting. So ah, they want me to repeat information that came up yesterday that sudden traumatic passings, again, even though it looks like the physical body is suffering and the person may be shouting, the soul has already just disengaged awareness, if not completely from the body as a built-in self-protective mechanism. So the kind of suffering that takes place, they say, don't even use the word suffering. The experiences that take place after the soul leaves the body are very different from what we in human term know, understand as suffering. Okay. Wow. Hey, Lynette. These are some great questions. I yeah. love this one because my, my dad talks about music on the other side. What kind of music do the spirits love? Do they become attracted to some particular kind of music or to our singing? Do they love any particular instrument or voice technique over another? Okay. And you know, when I get into this connected mode, I have trouble with multiple questions at once. It's something I, I would say I'm space. Even my husband might say, you're like that all the time, Suzanne. <laughs> so I can shorten that. You can shorten that first. Yeah, one at a time, please. Okay. Do those in spirit have a preference for a particular kind of music? Ah, uh, yes. Oh, this is interesting. They're saying that music with a frequency that your scientists would understand as one over F frequency. And I don't understand that at all. But it is a certain coherent in phase type of music is that which those across the veil are attracted to. For there is a feeling that comes with it. There is an awareness of balance and harmony, just as you know when music is disharmonious and dissonant. There is a natural attraction to this type of music, and we wish to tell you that there is a completely different kind of music across the veil that is based on a different scale and patterns, just as your native Americans have a five note scale. There are different patterns across the veil that produce even more harmonious music that you will recognize when you go to your ultimate home. Wow. I love that answer. <laughs> Something we haven't heard yet. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh Was there a second part or third part, fourth part? That was a mini part. Um, are they are those in spirit attracted to our singing when we sing here on earth? Oh, like, yes. Like music to, we say have the expression like music to our ears. It's music to their heart for it, it generally ex, is the expression of the experience of joy. And they're showing me also that sometimes we, we kind of sing when we're sad, but it still is a feeling of connection and harmony that it engen that engender it engenders that attracts our loved ones with a feeling of connection. So nice. So it wouldn't matter that someone doesn't sing well like me. <laughs> it's, it's the feeling of that makes me sing that they're attracted to. Exactly. And I'm kind of in the same boat as you. Sometimes, you know, a favorite song comes on the radio and I belt and I belt, belt it out and I say, why doesn't it come out the way it feels inside? <laughs> and I guess all of you listening can, well, many of you can relate. We have a lot of members of our community who have beautiful voices. Yeah. What a gift that is. We all have our gifts. <laughs> Thank uh, you. What do you call it if it's not our gift and our what? If it's not a gift, it's what? Oh, no, if it's not a gift, I guess it's our challenges. Right? Okay. Music is a challenge. 
<laughs> for me. Singing anyway. Yeah. Thank you for that. Bev. Okay, sort of a, a fun question uh, from Jackie. I would like to know where Sanaya is and what they are doing when they're not speaking through Suzanne to us. Ah, very good one. So oh, I'll go back to full screen for me here. So for those of you who may be new to the name Sanaya, that's what my guides told me to call them. They're a collective consciousness who first came to me in meditation in 2010 and said that I would write and write and write as their voice. And now I speak for them and channel them a masculine and feminine presence because they're made up of higher beings, both those who have been in physical form before, such as my spirit guide, and also angels, archangels, and some that we know of ascended masters. So where are they? Of course, all beings, all expressions of source are right here, just at different bandwidths of frequencies. They all have their own ringtones as well, but they're much more adept at blending and merging and making their presence known when we need them. So the whole group they're telling me right now does not have to gather whenever I do a channeling session or answer questions like this. Well, they say they actually know the questions many of them in advance. Some of my, my two girls here have uh, uh, freedom of choice and may throw a few ringers in there. I'm not sure about that, but they bring in the right people to answer the specific questions. I'm feeling like I missed part of that. Did I answer all of it, Beth? Um, yeah, they when uh, Jackie wondered, you know, what does Sanaya do? That whole group, what do they do when they're they're not doing this? <laughs> Minister to you, meaning all of us. And that's what those in the higher realms who are chosen to do this kind of work do best. They have the higher perspective. They're here for all of us. You don't have to call them Sanaya. That's just the, the name they've given when I tune into all of that energy. But ask them, what shall I call you when you feel someone assisting you? You don't even have to know who it is or feel them. Ask for assistance and watch for the results. Hmm. Hmm. And they say that they are always learning as well, that the growth never stops across the veil. So they learn from helping us, they learn from each other, and they also enjoy listening to music. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm and inspiring our musicians, inspiring our artists, our writers, and people who are not even aware of their gifts are being inspired. Lovely. That reminds me of a time I was connecting with my husband pretty regularly and one day he didn't come through. And so the next day when I got a hold of him, I said, where were you yesterday? And he said, in a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it was too funny. Like, oh, I just pictured his heavenly staff meeting. Uh, okay. I hope it's not like like a lot of meetings I used to attend in the Navy where you know there's always somebody that has to talk on and on. <laughs> it's all telepathic. I wonder how that would work. Someone hogs the telepathy. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So is it my turn? Might as well be. Okay. Um, can animals do a dream visit from spirit? And what are the signs of that? Oh, yes, they can say so spirit. And I know it because I've had them from my own Rudy and Gretchen. Yeah. Have you two had visits from your pets who've passed? I haven't. Nobody comes to me in dreams because I don't remember them. But my nephew, who is not a believer, had a, it was obviously a dream visit. His beautiful golden running clear across the front yard, jumping into his arms for just a minute and then running away with like looking back and smiling. And he said it was the most intense thing he'd ever experienced, but he knew it was just a dream, <laughs> but he yeah. hasn't gotten over it either. And he remembers yeah. all of the details and they all just loved Sona so much. We all did. And, so and the way Lynette just said, he knew it was just a dream. That's his uh, excuse for that. Yeah. That's how he yeah. rationalizes that. Yeah. And we all, that's a very human thing to do, to say, oh, it's just a dream. And yet it's that solidity there. And, but and you he have had your... He talks about it all the time. He still talks but, about uh, it. Yeah. 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 But I know your beloved Boo has come through in meditation, so she doesn't need to come through in dreams. How yeah. about you, Beth? Hmm. Yeah, I don't remember my dreams, so I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, but, you know, I, I just sense them. Yeah. Um, just, you know, a thought out of nowhere. And it feels like, um, 
you know, one of, one of my, I've got several across the veil. One of, one of the pets might be there and I can feel which one it is, you know, just there's a sense of personality. But, sure. Yeah. yeah. Was there a second part to that question, Lynette? No, that was it. Just the happiness yeah. of dream visits from our little creatures. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Go for that, that solidity that you just can't deny. That was not a regular dream. All right. Beth. Okay. Actually, uh, two, two questions came in um, that are very similar. Uh, wondering, what is a, a twin soul and a um, twin flame? these terms that, that we tend to use, is there such a thing? And, and what is the difference between the two? Twin souls and twin flames. Okay, this is something we can't prove. It's all conjecture. I'm gonna just do my best to listen to what the guides say. And they say you can get wrapped around the axle with your vocabulary. The word twin is what is significant, just as twins come from the same womb at the same time. Twin souls and twin flames, you would understand as the same thing. They are arising from within the same soul across the veil with such familiarity that there is a recognition at this level that cannot be denied. Understand that the soul is so much more than one incarnation and there can be even triplet and quadruplet souls. Ooh, there's a first. <laughs> but uh, do not worry when one who you consider a twin flame or soul passes before you do. Certainly the soul is aware of this for you share the same soul and will be reunited in total awareness upon your passing but can communicate soul to soul as you always have while still in human form. Wow. Hmm. Now, this is very important because there is a distinction between that and a soulmate. So don't automatically assume that someone you love with all your heart is a twin flame, twin soul. This is actually quite rare according to Sonia. And I'm asking them, why would that happen then? for the experience of the soul. But there are enough beautiful moments that can be exchanged between incarnations of separate souls, which of course are never really separate, that it is not necessary to have the twin soul relationship for the kind of love you would understand as a soulmate to happen. All right. All right. I hope everybody's enjoying this. We're just going to keep going. We never know what questions are going to pop up. So stay with us. Next I always question. love it when you're surprised by the answers that come from. <laughs> you know, what's really interesting, what you learn to do in this work too, is, is certainly uh, comes when I'm working as a medium, when people ask questions of their loved ones across the veil, the, the very first automatic reaction comes from the human programming that says, how do I know? right? Because we're just so used to operating as only human. But this is the beauty of the awakened way teaching, that the more we come to know that we're part of a team, that we have helpers across the veil, that we're not only human, and we can shift and tune in like I did right before we went on the air, then we don't have to panic. When we have that thought, how do I know? It's instantly replaced by, I don't have to know. I just ask. And that kind of process is available to everybody yay great okay this is a question it's fairly long but it's just some background okay. i was listening to a modern day mystic speaking about the concept of higher consciousness and how when we pass over we can experience a high level of being peace and love however he says there is no story in this state no personality no sense of self just peace and love this has made me feel confusion, uncomfortable, and scared of the afterlife now. The idea of losing myself, my memories, and all of that really scares me. However, I've heard in other Messages of Hope shows that the sense of self in the story is always a part of us and, and loved ones, and a part of how loved ones communicate with us, but I am confused. Could you clarify 
Yes. Yeah. Will we always have a sense of self in the afterlife? Can we always hold on to our story if we choose? This is one of the greatest teachings we can come to know that you are not just a story, not only a story, and then the pure state of being, of pure awareness. No wonder people get afraid because when you're identified with only the story, I am state your name, and you are taught by someone that that's going to completely disappear so that you find peace and bliss, that could be frightening. The beautiful part of coming to that awareness of what non-duality, the pure state of being is, can be acquired or attained through the journey of coming to know yourself first as both human and the pure state of awareness. And this is what meditation offers us moments of setting the story aside for however long we're capable while we still have a physical brain acting as a filter and experiencing those moments of bliss that comes when there's none of the story and the drama to distract us. So even when you cross the veil and leave the body behind, trust me from talking to thousands of souls and higher beings, they hang on to their story because it still serves a purpose. It doesn't mean the higher beings have not achieved oneness or non-duality. They reenact the story. They are source enacting the story as the higher being because it still serves us here and the greater good. So get in the habit, if you're at all frightened, of thinking it's okay to be both the story and pure being and experience as much as you can that pure being state until you feel and know you are always safe. You're always loved. You are this awareness. And it's by choice, just as it was source's choice to engender you, that we arise and dissolve into pure beingness. But just like a writer, a composer can't be quiet and still for long, new beings have to just arise. So your greater soul may engender another lifetime, but it would still love, using human terms, that story that it lived as you, and that story can arise at any time. Just like you can't control your thoughts now, you can't control whether your story comes and goes. So learning to let go of the story and stop identifying with it, but still appreciating what is, here I am playing this role, is a really great step along the process. It's, it's a beautiful journey, but don't have to be afraid of anything at all. Learn to trust source and know that no energy is ever lost, only transformed, right? Beautiful. Great, thank you. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. okay. tagging right on to that, uh, we have a question about energy. If energy is indestructible, what happens to the negative energies that are experienced in this human realm? Well, it may be indestructible, but it's transformed. So energy, we humans label it good and bad, happy and sad, evil and benevolent, right? We give that labels. But from the state of pure being, there is only a rising vibration. So the vibrations settle back into the pure state of being and come up again. So it's just transformed. The more that we humans, the guides say shift more to us now, because I'm just, I don't want to just ramble on. <laughs> so let's see. The more you come to know your true nature as pure being in expression, the more you will shine your light to the exclusion of darkness. So that's the journey that we're on, just transforming the darkness into light. It's, we, we, we have that balance here because the good and bad, the opposites here, because we are part of the world of duality where opposites will always be part of this reality. So deep questions. Got any more about pets? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just want to explain what just happened there. I'm holding this connection with spirit because I don't have the answers and I have to tune into them. And uh, people want to know if that's tiring. What's tiring about it is two things. 
holding the focus on spirit and keeping the part of me that says I'm tired or I have, I'm busy or that's too hard, keeping that off to the side. So that's why channeling can be a little tiring, but otherwise to have the energy of Sanaya flowing through is actually quite invigorating. Hey. I think we all love that energy. Mm -hmm. We, we do have another question about pets. Okay. Um, are, I've lost the question on these many, many pages of questions. So I'm going to try to put it back the way that, um, that I understood it. And that is if, we don't see those in spirit. We don't feel them in a physical sense, except in really rare cases where you might feel a touch or a hug or, you know, a warmth or some physical sensation as a result of, I don't know if that takes heroic efforts on spirit's side. Um, but what about when we transition to the other side? Can our pets feel us? Can we feel them in the uh, same I, way? I love it. Even before, even before you finish the question, Spirit's putting the answer in my head. It, these Each reality is a relative reality. So things here seem solid because this is the bandwidth we're operating in. And my guide said that across the veil, if you wish to feel a pet, it will feel solid to you. But you will no longer have that need because you'll have the awareness of their presence, which overcomes any need for physicality. It's a fullness and allness, a presence that fills you more than any physical touch could. Ooh, how so, promising is that? So it's even better than sleeping with my puppy boo. That's pretty much the way they're saying it. Yeah. Okay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that, you know, for those of you who don't have pets, don't worry. That would apply to our loved ones as well, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. Lovely. Thanks. Okay. Bev, how about another one? Hey, okay. my turn. Uh, from Melissa. Could you help me understand the concept of living parallel lives? I'm very confused about our linear time versus no time in the spirit realm. <laughs> and I know from past, past questions of this type that the guides only go so far because we can't wrap our human minds around it. All, they're saying basically all is not as it seems. They are talking to us and our souls currently are in a realm beyond space and time. Time is an artifact, a construct of your reality, an effect of the vibrational world in which you live, but it is not necessary. Oh my goodness. I can't explain it. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> they, they just, they give it to me and I can't wrap even my words around it. So parallel lives happen because the soul again is not limited to one incarnation and can have multiple experiences at once. That's two beings from the same soul, but could we be having different experiences? Yes. They say at the soul level, we are already across the veil cavorting with loved ones who have passed. But because the brain acts as a filter of consciousness, we're not able to focus on this reality and that one at the same time. Unlike when we cross the veil and our dear friend Brenda has told us, she can bilocate and trilocate and be aware of the presence of multiple people at once, which must be quite the interesting experience. Especially for a busybody like Brenda, because <laughs> she is that. <laughs> oh gosh. So before we go on, let me just talk about upcoming events. We have our monthly connection that's always coming up, right? Every As soon as I finish one, I'm getting new information, new teaching, and new really astounding evidence from across the veil to share in the next one. Uh, let's see, already coming up, we have another Making the Connection workshop at the Omega Institute next summer. That's way off. In the meantime, we have a couple big speaking engagements coming up. Bottom line, go to my website, SuzanneGeisman.com. And there's the website. I'll put it up there right now. And that's for monthly connection. That one's almost past October 3rd, but the website, Suzanne Geisman, at the top, scroll down a little and you'll always see where you can see me in person and online. And I do just want to put in a plug for my new book that's coming out from Hay House in April, the Awakened Way, which is the foundation of all the teaching that we share on this program and everything that I do. We're going to have some really cool promotions coming up 
in the future to get people familiar with the book. So please go to my website as well and sign up for my newsletter list. Just scroll down the homepage and a pop-up will come up that you can fill out and be part of our beautiful community of kindred spirits. Okay. All right. Bev, are you next? I lost track. I don't okay, know. Well, why don't you just All right. <laughs> we have the next question? This question actually just came in uh, before we started uh, from Donna. Uh, would you address the future of AI, artificial intelligence, for our world? It's a bit unnerving to me as it takes over more and more human uh, aspects. Mm, this is a good one, and I definitely need to address the guides for this one. Mm. The guides are saying the challenge with artificial intelligence is that there is so much fear in the human field, and this will attract even more of those who wish to use it in nefarious ways. For this reason, we are turning up our efforts to help all of you make wiser choices, to choose always from the heart, and to use these tools and your technology for good. There has always been the ability to use technology to damage the masses. And until this point, you have not blown yourselves up, they say. So maintain hope that you are being helped from above and do your part to use your technology for the greatest good. Okay. All righty. Lynette. Well, that's interesting. Um, okay. Yeah. A lot of fear around that. I feel that from people all the time, you know, just even the AI just. Yeah. Just be, be aware of the human tendency to just automatically go there. I just saw an article about it. And the more I read it, I felt the fear coming up and the guide said, just set that aside. Don't give it power. Don't give the fear power. The true power is spirit and just hold on to that and be and, and make your choices from that place always okay um there are so many teachings in different religious traditions and different spiritual paths that seem to contradict each other whether there's a hell or not whether there's a devil or not whether we're punished or not whether jesus was a messiah or not whether there is a jesus whether there's an afterlife how do we know what is true and come to trust that and, then, and the guides say, go back to the question on intuition. If you look at all the religions, m most of us start off with a religion because it's where we, it's the culture in which we're born. Your family, the geography, the group of people with, which, with whom you socialize. So again, right off the bat, you can see, are these stories? Is the teaching passed down? And what is the teaching based on? Definitely, if it's based on fear, take a real close look at that. How do you know what is truth? You know it in your heart. And that's why many people who have gone down a certain religious path, and I know I'm looking at at least one of them here, have seen the fear and said, this is not my truth, and found the freedom and the courage to think with the heart and not with the head and follow that. So either one of you want to comment on this one? Well, I do because I was that seven year old being terrified by the missionaries and, and knowing that that alone, my question um, was enough to send me to hell. Just questioning was enough to say it's all over for you. But what I remember you saying somewhere in a workshop or a conference or something is if it creates fear, it is not in alignment with the reality, with the greater reality. If something brings up fear within me, then that's of human rule set human experience and and that has been such a wonderful way to discern you know true from just this this stuff there's lots of stuff that scares me here scary movies you know somebody getting hit by a car in front of me there's all sorts of things that are scary and and the things that i was taught as a child are really no different than that they're just things that are scary they were scary you set those aside because the truth is here to align with that is is where the no and to know and you just you just know by sitting with it and I'll get to you in a second, Bev, if you have something else to add. But what the guides are showing me is like a lightning bolt where we have secondary branches of fear. 
that another type of fear is what if I don't believe? And then the fear is not only in the teachings, but it's in our community and what will they think of me? So there are all these tendrils of fear. Whereas if you simply follow your heart and know that the basic essence of all life is goodness and connection, love, the one light of being, of source, of God, this divine intelligence that's guiding all of us, this awareness that we all share when we get rid of all the stories, then you can listen to the stories and glean from them the truth that is in them because they all do have some, a lot of truth, but there is also parts that like whisper down the lane have been transmuted over the years by those seeking power and those lording fear over others. So I'm not gonna, don't, no need to point fingers at any one religion at all or any belief system when there's always some good there also. So go to the heart. Bev, how about you? What's your experience? Yeah, I guess I, my thought is always, you, we were given this built-in guidance system, the heart and the gut, and yet you have to trust that. If there's a little bit of, you know, um, that that's a signal to us. Uh, and if it, it feels good and loving, um, that's another signal. And it and it's built in. Yeah. I'm so glad that when I discovered that I could talk to my stepdaughter, Susan, who had passed and other people's loved ones as well, that I wasn't raised with any religious background. I had my own beliefs about God uh, that were a little more expansive than most of the religions I had heard of, but I didn't have to undo anything. I had no fear about talking to spirits because I saw how healing it is when someone you love has died and you have the opportunity to talk to them real time, two way interactive communications with someone that you thought was dead and gone and to find out they're right here and they still have helpful healing messages for us. How could that possibly be wrong? So when I uh, first started this work, I was actually uh, still in human mode and fearful of coming up against people with strong fundamentalist religious thoughts. And now I'm at the point where I respect that's where they are. I don't try to change anybody's mind. And the more I have let go of my fear in that regard, the human fear, I've come to meet more and more even evangelists who appreciate the fact that we can talk to spirits, that it is helpful in healing. So it's really beautiful that as we clear out our stuff, we open ourselves up for a greater connection with more and more people. Neat. Okay, let's see. It's Bev's turn. Okay. Is it my turn? <laughs> yeah, let me just remind everybody, we're asking questions submitted from all of you. So even if we don't get to your question today, you can write them in the comments. You can let us know if the show is helpful to you. Click subscribe so that you don't miss any future ones and tell your friends to tune in as well. Okay, there's a question that, that really tags along with what we've just been talking about. Um, they, uh, Lisa asked, how do we explain to our Christian friends and family that mediumship is not evil? And I would you know, extend that to say, how do, how do we speak to our friends who just don't believe uh, any of what we're doing? Well, my, my beautiful team of assistants here that includes Valerie and Stephanie and Jayesh, we have all come to know that love is the answer to everything. So we don't try to convince anybody. We don't try to change people's minds. We just state what's our truth when people ask. We don't push it on anybody. But even if people come at us in any way that's less than loving, we pause, we shift to the soul's focus, and we answer from that place of love and of a brighter light. So how do you talk with your own friends? I wouldn't even go there unless they bring it up. And if they do bring it up, put down your defenses and say, this is my truth and I hope you can learn to respect it. And you say that with love and you don't give them anything to push back against. Nice. That's great. So are we ready for another one? I'm ready. And I think that is the prettiest scarf, isn't it? Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know where I got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
are there other groups like Sanaya? And wait, wait. I want people to put in the comment section where they think Lynette got her scarf. Oh. Maybe we'll <laughs> tell you in a future show. <laughs> Are there other groups like Sanaya and do they have different missions? Is there any oh. overlap among these higher level groups that are oh. advising us? The guides say, as I twitch my lip there, limitless, because all these groups are, are combinations of higher beings, lots of overlap. And they all have different names because we humans are the ones that like our names and we ask them what to call them. And some call them the council and some call them Abraham and some call them other names that many of you would recognize and they all have that same mission of course to help us so it, they're showing me this just flowing flowing intermingling groups but yet there's a vibration that comes from us that they're attracted to so that's where the difference comes in they know the, those across the veil they're telling me now know that they'll be able to communicate with certain channels in a specific way. And they also may have a certain focus. Some people like to talk about the future. Others like to talk about uh, specific dimensions or extraterrestrials. My guide Sanaya says ours is philosophy and love, spirituality, metaphysics, and the afterlife. Love, love, love. That's our group. And then we love them. Where's my mug? Hang on. Dun, 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 dun. My you are so very loved. Mug says it all. You have one? Oh, Beth has one. Pretty soon you'll be able to get them right here on my channel. So check back because we realize that everybody loves swag, right? <laughs> I love it too. All right, Bev, how about another one? We'll just keep marching along here. Okay, from Ellen. Is it possible to make wrong turns in life? Or is every decision and every choice that we make leading us to what we need to learn? Yes, I know the guides say. And first of all, understand that that's a human term to say wrong and there's judgment inherent in it. The guides say it is strictly at a different angle from the direction that you would be benefited by traveling. So if we are headed by soul contract in this direction and this is in our greatest good and we make a decision to go this way we call it wrong but the guys just say different direction and ultimately you'll find your way back here even if it's across the veil you'll ultimately come to the final destination which is realizing i'm more than my story i am source and expression i am this beautiful light so if we could stop using words like wrong, we would just flow more and not make so many turns. Cool. You know, this is the thing when you tap into spirit. I, I believe this is part of the reason why so many of you like these shows, because the energy feels so good, because we don't judge each other. We don't judge you. And we're all learning not to judge ourselves either. When you tap into higher consciousness, it feels so good. They are always loving and patient and accepting and respectful and humble of around us. So we learn to be the same way with each other. And who could ask for more than that, huh? Well, so that really brings us to the next question, which is excellent. And that's an excellent. And, and you kind of just answered it, but we'll let you expand a little bit or let them expand. Thank Can you. spirits be in a bad mood, annoyed, sad, or angry from time to time? Can their vibrations drop because of that and bring them to a less pleasant place? Mm. Funny, I just answered this on the uh, for the special program on angels. Angels are real, part one. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out. It's there on my Messages of Hope channel. No, the answer is just no. <laughs> Bad hair days on the other side. No bad hair days. I love it. <laughs> no caffeine withdrawal, cranky, overslept, that stuff. Isn't that wonderful? Wow. So why do we choose to come back here? Because the opportunities to feel by contrast who we really are are off the wall. Huge. And I'm a writer. See how good I am with words? <laughs> off the wall huge. <laughs> 
<laughs> but truly, I know that and we, we say this almost every time we do one of these Q&A sessions here, Bev and Lynette and me, I sitting here joking and laughing and joyous. And yet we've been where many of you are right now. And we absolutely know how serious human drama can be. And we're doing our best to model for you another way of living. We call it the awakened way of living. And it comes down to knowing you're not only human. You're part of one big web connecting all that is. What's the third one, girls? We find our way home through the heart. Yeah, the healing creative force of the universe. The universe is love. Is love. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And you find your way home through the heart. Uh, does that mean that the three of us don't have our bad hair days? Huh. Not at all. In fact, my October 3rd monthly connection, which is available in the archives if you miss it, tells about when I thoroughly lost it. Uh, so here's the, the so-called spiritual teacher having a really bad hair day, but not my hair might have looked fine, but I lost it big time. But as a result of that, had some phenomenal lessons that have taken me to another level. And that's the way it goes, right? We're just always growing. We have a mistake, maybe a little setback, and on we go. Thank goodness. Yeah. And it's why we're given our beautiful community of friends and supporters, kindred spirits who get this, who understand that. Bev, you're up. Another we'll one. Five more minutes if you want to hang in there with us. Maybe a little longer. What does Sanaya have to say about those? who feel they were not born with the correct gender, especially children. There are lessons in every experience for all of you. You are seeing a trend in your society where more are questioning who they are because we will not assign words such as good or bad to issues see them as learning opportunities. If you can come to see that beneath the gender all share the same awareness, then all of this turmoil as to what is right or wrong, good or bad, will have played itself out. We are not going to make a determination as to whether these changes in the body are good or bad, for are you not all coming to terms with who you truly are as a result of the questioning? See it as we do, as the next stage in the evolution of human awareness that you are more than the physical bodies. Hmm. Hmm. And the human side says, but I want spirit to tell me yes or no. And they don't. Almost everything is both and two ways of looking at everything. You want the human answer, it's going to be cut and dried. You want the spirit answer? It's going to be more open, more inclusive, and all about the love. Okay. Wow. These are great questions. They are. Thank you all. Yeah. So this is an interesting one because, uh, you know, we, my dad used to say, I don't want to cross over and sit on a cloud playing a harp. How boring that would be. So if a person is grumpy, you have said they will be grumpy on the other side. Is this something that they just show to demonstrate who they are in a reading? Or is this something that they have to work on or something they will always be as their soul evolves? That's going to absolutely depend soul to soul. Uh, the soul is always aware who it is. The story can take on a life of its own because everything is like a nested doll and imbued with self-awareness in the human lineage, self-awareness and creativity and intelligence. So when we say that if, if you're grumpy here, you're going to be grumpy when you cross the veil, that's just an immediate, that's who you are. But like Brenda, she was immediately awake when she crossed the veil because she was no longer grumpy on this side. She'd had a full awakening and learned to love herself. Uh, definitely those across the veil will show what they were like when they come through in a reading. Then they show me, but I've changed if they have. Some people may hang on to that story because it feels good to them and they might want to be grumpy. And I haven't actually 
encountered a grumpy soul in any of my readings, but I've encountered many who said I was a son of a gun and my eyes have been open across the veil and I felt all the love and I want nothing more than to apologize to my family for my behavior. So, yeah. Great. If we can Thank feel you. that love for ourselves here, then the grumpiness would pretty much dissolve, wouldn't it? Yeah. I think there was a third part to that question that was important. Can they work on that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I had a, a woman come through in a reading earlier this week, a person's mother who was showing what she was like with my client, her daughter. And I've, I even said aloud, it's very unusual. She is, oh, I remember now. Yeah, thanks. She is not apologizing for her behavior. And then suddenly the mother shifted out of the role completely to the soul level and was talking as the soul completely detached from the role and said that she had chosen at the soul level to be this tough mother because the daughter came in here to have her buttons pushed, chose those parents on purpose. But now that the daughter was learning who she was, mom didn't need the role at all and just jumped straight to the soul level. And the daughter knew her mother at the soul level. And there was no need for an apology. They were just then talking soul to soul and truly all was well. And just an wow. immediate shift out of story on everybody's part here we are as soul family. We've known each other for a thousand years. I love that. It sounds like Pollyanna makeup stuff, doesn't it? But this is backed up with evidence in readings of, of parts of the story that I couldn't know that show. I really am talking to your mother and now I'm really talking to her soul. It's stunning, stunning, helpful, healing interactions. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Bev. Okay, we're going to take another one. Um, Jean asks, are all future events known at some higher level? Mm, not Is all. the script laid out? Only to a certain extent, they say, because that is part of the evolution of the species of humanity. There are certain... Uh, major events that they can see coming because they see our thoughts. They know the decisions that are being made down the line, but because of free will, that's the wild card and we all get to make choices. And that's why we didn't get an answer about AI, right? Because people are still kind of playing with that and we're using the fear as a tool and we're using the love as a tool and we get to work together to see what kind of outcome are we going to have? So every one of us is important. I want to just shift gears here for a minute. I don't know if we'll get to any more questions or not, but I want to talk about the daily message this morning uh, from my guides. If you don't know about the Awakened Way app, go to the app store on your phone and enter Awakened Way, and uh, you'll get those daily messages from the same guides that have been answering your questions today, Sanaya, plus a little button, an oracle button that you can push and ask, what message do I need now? And it will draw exactly what you need from over... 5,000 messages. I'm going to go out full screen here for a second, girls. So today's message was about distractions and how the outer world can so grab our attention that we miss that inner voice and what's going on in here. Every morning when I post the daily message, I receive it in meditation and I open up my iPad to type the daily message. And when I open a brand new email to do that, I send myself an email with the message in it. I can easily be distracted by what's in my inbox. And the guides have actually shown me, don't look at your inbox because they know our human tendency to get distracted. So how easily are you distracted by things around you? And how much more smoothly could your life flow if you spend a little time by shutting out the external world and paying attention to what's going on inside here? I know that... Lynette and Bev, you you have a regular meditation practice and that takes discipline and commitment, but how does that pay off in your lives? It just, I, I used to be more haphazard than I am now. So um, I've noticed that when I do it just consistently at the same time each day and preferably early in the morning for me, but I do one at night too, just before bed. Um, it's like there's a, a 
like a carpet's been rolled out through the day. Like there's just, you know, like, Ooh, there's the way that we go. And it just feels like this peaceful, even when the day is chaotic and crazy and busy and wild, there just feels like there's something underlying all of it. There's this feeling of peace, even though surface level, it's crazy. That solidity is there. And I'm so grateful for that. I can't imagine going without that. Yeah. How about you, Beth? Yeah. You know, I, I just think of it as my, my guidance uh, for the day. And, you know, if you're asking guidance in every thought and word and deed, and, and you've asked your team, then no matter what happens during the day, I, I, I know um, that was my request and uh, they've got my back. So it, it's it, got your back. It, I don't know, a, co a confidence to my day, you know. Very cool. Well, I got to tell you girls, I have a dinner party for six here at this house tonight. <laughs> and I told you I've been working since six in the morning on another video for my Hay House book. So my poor husband has gone and done the grocery shopping and I better jump in now and be part of the human team or I might get kicked off the island here. Right? <laughs> but it's really interesting that we're meeting two new sets of neighbors. And I know that one is very often talking about their church and their Bible study group and that they're very much members of their church community. I know that the other one came in my house here and said, what is it you do? And I told her and she kind of went, oh, so I don't know if my current work is going to come up, but we addressed that today, which I think is so interesting. And if it does, won't it be interesting to see the reaction, but we know how we're going to handle it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just with love and respect and pass the broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Bev. Thank you, Lynette. Always fun to gather with you. And I want to thank all of you for joining us for this hour. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do so because we're going to have weekly programs from now on with special guest speakers, special topics, and repeatedly these Q&A sessions with questions from you. We love you all members of our community and we'll see you back here next time.